we got to talk Bedlam. All right, so we'll, we'll go faster on these other ones, but these yeah. top three, of course, we have to spend quite a bit of time on. Oklahoma State, post-game win expectancy, 82%. Oklahoma State made so many mistakes that cost them points in this game. This should have been a blowout, Chris. Like, it should have been a blowout. And yes, the points still count when the other team makes the mistakes, right? But, uh, oh, uh, uh, sorry, can't talk. Oklahoma did not score an offensive point in the second half. That Jim Knowles defense... The fundamentals, again, another example of a team that brings in guys and develops them over years, because these are all guys that have been there for like three years together. They understand chemistry. They understand the fundamentals of defense, right? They are so fundamentally sound in the secondary, and I think the pressure of the game led them to make a few mistakes here and there, especially early. But for the most part, the way that they defend passes, the way that they are able to get after uh, the quarterback, they are such an incredibly well-coached football team, especially on the defensive side. And, of course, the tempo that they were running with early, I was a a little bit worried about this. (laughs) I'll tell you this. On the BetUS show, I took Oklahoma State minus 4.5. I had already bet Oklahoma State minus three and a half, but the way that that show works, we have to give out the line that is that's there on the day of the show, and we have a chance to pass on it. and And I might should have passed on it once it jumped up to four and a half from three and a half, but I bet a pretty large sum of money of my own personal money on Oklahoma State minus three and a half. And yep. my God, the four point margin <laughs> was was perfect for me. But it hit right in the middle where I lost the bet US bet, but I hit the and I told everybody on the show I was like I took it at three and a half. Still like it at four and a half, you know, whatever. But uh, but luckily, it didn't hurt me in the pocketbook as far as that went. But, my God, I mean, just so so many mental mistakes that caused that running into the kicker or roughing the kicker, pass interference calls that just so frustrating, right? This was the, – the turnovers that actually cost points were Oklahoma State's turnovers. They had three turnovers that cost them sure. 13 points. Oklahoma sure. had two turnovers that cost – Zero points. Now, that's because of the way that turnovers are actually cited, I guess. They're kept in the stat book. But that Eric Gray fumble on the punt return led directly to the game-winning touchdown. So sure. so that did count as whatever, but it did not count as a turnover on the stat sheet because it's weird. I don't get how that works. But either way, this game was incredibly fun. And it's the whole reason why they call it Bedlam, right? Go, go ahead. This I know was, you want to jump in. <laughs> this was the best game of the three by, and you know, I don't even think it was close. I loved watching Michigan just manhandle Ohio State. Yeah, now, but that, but that, like, if if you are an unbiased observer and you don't know history for the last ten years and you're just watching a football game, that game wasn't really fun. Michigan kind of just beat the shit out of them. Yeah, and I mean, Alabama. You know, Auburn a game. defensive struggle. It, like it was, it wasn't it just boring. a defensive struggle. This was just two bad offenses. Yeah, it was like, boring. This is, this is two offenses that weren't. These weren't defenses making great plays. These were two offenses that didn't know what the hell they were doing. Yeah. That's that's not fun to watch. Um, because I'll watch a defensive struggle all day long. This was not that. This game was crazy, wild mistakes, big plays. Uh, yeah. Oklahoma State made all the mistakes because that's what Gundy does. He kind of falls apart coaching wise in this game every year. He held on to win it. Thank God. We love that. But <laughs> has he ever like coached a great game from start to finish in Bedlam? Ever? No. No. And and and, and somebody brought it up. Well, the, right, the so hold on, hold on. Ten years ago, ten year twenty eleven, when they beat Oklahoma uh God. 44 to 10 or whatever it was. That, that was the year that everybody thought they should have been in the national title game anyway. That's right. But they, right. That, that was that the game, one. That game he would probably. Yeah. yeah. So that, that was so, it. Go ahead. But so somebody somebody brought up very few highly rated high school players for this Oklahoma team. Like, like they're not loaded with four and five star talent. This is player development. You know what this team reminds me of? This team reminds me of those really good Mississippi State Dan Mullen teams. Yeah. Like they, they had a four star to be found on that roster. Those are some of those rosters, but man, those kids all play well and they are well coached and they are well prepared. That that's what I thought about this Oklahoma State team. They just just keep coming at you. They keep pressuring you. Games kind of got ugly on them early in, in a couple of games, and they just keep doing what they're doing. They don't panic, and eventually the other team finds a way to break. They make a mistake. They capital, uh, Oklahoma State capitalizes, and they 
they go on to, to win the game. They haven't beaten the hell out of a lot of teams. They just keep putting pressure. They just keep coming at you. And and they normally don't make mistakes. In this game, they did. They, they just kind of found a ways to overcome them. I, I found it. I found it very enjoyable to watch, not just seeing Oklahoma lose, because I, I do like that. But but that's not that has nothing to do with it. This was a fun game. I mean, Oklahoma made some plays. I mean, yes. Williams is a stud and he's he's that, absolutely that going to be unbelievable was, to watch. <laughs> that last drive where they have done Oklahoma State has done everything right. And yes. they're playing man to man defense. No need and, to. and they they came after the quarterback, but they opened up a hole on the right side of the field where he just he ran 54, 56, oh. whatever the hell it was. <laughs> just drove me insane because, of course, I'm like, that's you, that, you've that got to be kidding. For you. <laughs> yeah, no, that's what, that's that what guy, I was worried about. <laughs> he's going he's gonna to be a problem. He's going to be a problem. If Lincoln Riley can stay there and hold on, you know. And develop um, him. It, like, he's only played half a him. year. Uh, he's, I don't know. I don't know what you have to do. I don't. I don't know what's going on in Oklahoma system to where they just can't stop anybody. But we thought this year. You told me every pundit in the world told me this year's going to be different. Oklahoma's defense is going to be legit. And man, I just not. said I, I believe it when I see it. But I don't see why they're going to be better this year. And and he named off. Oh, they they, they, know, they know the system and the DC has got things rolling, and they got all these high talented transfers coming in because that's what Lincoln does. And and I just was like, okay. Let's see it. In week one, we're you know we're all looking around saying, "Well, so much for that great defense when two lanes dropping a forty burger on you." Yeah, yeah, no, I, I, I will tell you this: Alex Grinch at Oklahoma had improved the defense every year since he had been there. So you would think the next logical step would be, okay, well they'll improve slightly over this past year because they were a top twenty defense last year. So you think, all right, well, now next step, probably up to top 15. And if you've got a good offense to go along with the top 15 defense, that's what Alabama was last year. You know, and I didn't I, expect them to be what LSU was in 2019 or what Alabama was in 2020. But you would think, <laughs> Gary Lewis, dirty secret, Grinch is a media darling. Yeah, he is because of what he was able yeah. to do at, at Washington State, right, with Mike Leach. Mike Leach sure. had never had a good defense, ever. And he never had good players on defense. And what Alex Grinch was able to do at Washington State, you would think, okay, you give him better players at Oklahoma – and and up until this season, he had improved every year. And so this is this is what I think about that. Okay, the the issue is is this is why analytics don't work, and this is why stats lie. Well, maybe not analytics don't work. This is why I can't trust them. And this is why stats lie. Look at the offenses from the Big Twelve that Oklahoma played last year. All right, Texas's yeah. offense was a complete sham last year. They they fell all apart. There's a reason that 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 Hurtning got fired. He was the offensive guy, and they weren't great. TCU's offense was complete trash last year. Kansas State's offense was complete trash last year. Kansas was complete trash last year. Uh, uh, Baylor was complete trash from an offensive perspective last year. Every team they played but Iowa State was god-awful on offense in conference. Yeah, And so their defensive stats look better and better and better because they played all these teams that were terrible. And magically, this year, all those teams' offenses are a lot better, and they Kansas terrible Kansas gives you a scare. <laughs> that, that offense looks like shit, you know, like like a like a mediocre Tulane team that won what three games this year gave yeah, you two, the scare of your life week one two games. Uh, like uh, it's just one of those things where your stats said they improved, but I don't think they improved. I don't think they were better last year than they were the year before. I don't. I think they played sense. shittier teams. Yeah, no, it, it definitely makes sense. It definitely makes they play sense. They played the same teams, but all those teams were bad on offense some magical way, which is why I don't care about his resume from last year. Like, I don't – this is why I can't look at his resume. It's all I've had LSU fans tell me, or our LSU writers who are pumping the Lincoln Riley thing, is look at his record. Look, You would, you would kill for a coach <laughs> with this record. I, I use this analogy all the time. I don't believe there's an American nine-year-old in the country that could beat me in a fight, okay? Yeah. I think I would go 10,000 and 0 against every nine-year-old in the country. I could just beat them all up. That doesn't mean I'm a good fighter. Records don't matter if you don't play people that are good. Like, True. I would get my ass kicked by 99.9% of the world. Yes. But I'd beat every nine-year-old 
I'd beat them all in this country. Maybe not, you know, some other countries. <laughs> They're bored different, but they're soft here. So let me jump in here right quick. Larry Pilgrim jumped in and said he couldn't watch the Iron Bowl due to dish at CBS issues. I don't know if anybody has told you the secret or not, my friend, but the rabbit ears still work. Just letting you know. That's a, I, don't, I don't have rabbit ears either. This would completely bamboozle me if I had that problem. So. Yeah, that's, I've, you didn't I've miss got, anything, Larry. Don't <laughs> you, you didn't miss anything. I promise you. All the good parts were on a highlight reel, and, yeah. and it took about thirty seconds to get through. Okay, yeah, you probably you missed right. nothing. You are you probably saved yourself right. three and four hours of, of bullshit. <laughs> so back to Bedlam, right quick. The uh, total yardage in this game, Oklahoma had four forty one to three fifty four for. Oklahoma State uh, rushing yardage one eighty nine to one forty. As far as yardage goes, it was pretty even, but Oklahoma could not finish drives and they didn't score in the second half. It, the The pace that this game was going early, I thought, was bad for Oklahoma State's defense, and then they completely shut them out in the second half. They they gave up nine points in the second half due to Oklahoma getting a safety and a turnover. So it you know it, it is weird game. We're I'm glad we got scoried in this game. If we had a the defense of Bedlam, I was going to be a little bit upset because yeah. I've seen this Oklahoma State defense just murder people. Yes. And I was I was a little bit prepared for that mentally, especially the way the game kind of I I, I mean I guess they both scored on their first three drives within yeah, three drives. I mean it was it was a lot of um, points early, but the way it ended up going, it it turned just, into a defensive struggle. So we, yeah, we had but, points but early. But I still felt like we moved the football we didn't have a lot of three and out punt, three and out punt, three and out punt. That was that's that's kind of been a lot of Oklahoma State football this year. Yes. Great defense, mediocre offense. These boys broke out the checkbook. They broke out the playbook, and they they kind of said we spend in all of this tonight. Yes, it was twenty four twenty four at the half. Ended up thirty seven thirty three. Uh, incredible ball game to watch. Incredible. <laughs> Taylor, ball game. Taylor asked about ten year olds. I, I think I've. <laughs> I think I've seen some 10 year olds in my kids. This is like, not like the whole country in my kids' Taekwondo class that could probably kick my ass. <laughs> I wouldn't doubt it. I wouldn't doubt it. 10, 10, you're getting double digits, man. I've seen some 10 year olds with hair on the chest. Thanks for listening to the Winning Cures Everything podcast. The website is winningcureseverything.com. And if you want to connect with us, we're on Twitter at GaryWCE, at ChrisBGiannini, at Winning Cures, or you can email us, Gary at winningcureseverything.com or Chris at winningcureseverything.com. Subscribe everywhere you need to subscribe, and we'll see you soon.